Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure. Pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. Yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the postman, Mel Blank, our guest, Ben Gage, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. With extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffees skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today, more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Well, there's lots of excitement in the Burns home today. Gracie has just received word that she's to go to New York and write up the Lewis Kahn Championship fight for her newspaper column. Of all people to cover a prize fight. What do you know about boxing? I happen to be an authority on sports. <laughs> you? Oh, there may be one or two fine points on boxing that I'm not up on. Like, how many there are on a side. Uh, how many on a side? Of course, I can figure it out for myself. Just tell me how many there are altogether. <laughs> Maybe the names of the fighters will give you a hint. It's the Joe Lewis billy Khan fight. Oh, far, huh? Yeah Joe and Con fight Billy and Lewis <laughs> Look, Gracie, there are only two men in a prize fight One on a side Just one? That's all oh, it's Pretty small-time sport, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah, not doing well it's... Imagine, only one on a side Why, in baseball, they must have five or six <laughs> uh, Thank goodness I'm going to the Lewis Con fight with you Even if somebody got knocked out, you wouldn't know who won is it hard to tell if someone is knocked out? Certainly not. Let's say you were unconscious for more than ten seconds. No, in your case, that wouldn't prove anything. <laughs> I'll put it this way. If you were perfectly still for ten seconds, they'd call you a knockout. Oh. Well, let me move a little and they'd like me even better. <laughs> uh, forget about the technical part of the fight. I'll take care of that for you. Oh, thank you, dear. Um, who do you think will win, Lewis or Khan? Well, I don't know. Pretty close fight. Oh, yes, but your judgment is uncanny. Hmm. Remember last year how you told me who'd win the World Series and the Rose Bowl game and the golf championship? Oh, come on. Who's going to win the fight? Well, I'd pick Lewis. Oh, gee, that lucky Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this time I'm right. Let's make a little bet, huh? Okay. What do you want to bet? Well, if my man wins, you buy me a pair of nylons. Okay. And if your man wins, I buy them myself. <laughs> you want to handle this yourself? Yes. This bet? Yes. You don't want the Morris office to handle it? No. <laughs> Look, uh, I'd like to win something, too. How about a box of cigars, the, uh, the, you know, the cigars I smoke? Oh, well, the house would smell better if you smoke nylons. <laughs> Never mind the bet. Uh, when do they uh, When do they want you to come to New York? Oh, right away. I'm supposed to go to the fighters' training camps and interview them. You'll get the thrill of your life at those training camps. Yeah. Those boxers really have terrific physiques. Oh, that won't thrill me. No. No. What thrill is there left for a woman once she's looked at you? <laughs> Me, uh, I... You're top judge. So why should I look at anyone else? Does the peacock's mate look at the sparrow? <laughs> well, Does I... the lion's mate look at the alley cat? Uh, Gracie... Does the baboon's mate look at the monkey? Okay, okay, forget it, forget it, forget it. I still say I'm not the physical type. I'm just not built like those guys. Well, I think you... Come in. Hi, Burns's. What's new? Bill, I'd like to ask you a question. Uh, don't you think George is built like a boxer? Mm, yeah, he's built sort of like a boxer. Well, thanks, Bill. Of course, he's got a lot of poodle in him, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Bill, uh, Gracie didn't mean a box of dogs. She meant a prize fighter. Oh, oh, a prize fighter. Hmm. Yes. George and I are going to the Lewis Con fight, and I'm reporting it for my newspaper column. Oh, gee, lucky you, Gracie. Who's going to take over your radio program? Say, that's right. We've got to get someone to take over our program. Sure. Not only while we're in New York, but for the for the whole summer. Well, George, uh, I got a little show I could put on. It's a sort of a simplified quiz program. Simplified? Yes, I have only beautiful girls for contestants, and I ask only one question. Well, that doesn't sound like much fun. Oh, if I get the right answer, it'll be a riot. <laughs> Nothing doing, Willie. You're not taking over the summer show. Well, George, I wouldn't want to be the top man of the Maxwell House program just for the summer. No? No, I'd rather be like I am now, top man the whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Star. So long, Stooge. <laughs> well, now, George, this is a real problem. It won't be easy to find a man to replace you. You really mean that, Gretchen? Well, I certainly do. I know. We'll get Jack Benny, Bing Crosby, and Austin Wells. All three of them? Sure, they're off the air now. They'll help you look for someone. <laughs> I see. Well, if we don't get someone to take over the show, we'll just have to miss the big fight. Oh, dear, I'd hate to miss that. So would I. I'll go, dear. Yes, you go, dear. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Oh, thanks, Mr. Postman. Is something wrong today? You sound a bit preturbed. <laughs> oh, I am. My husband and I are just dying to see the world's champion fighter. Well, drop by my house any time my wife is home. <laughs> oh, no, no, Mr. Postman, not your wife. Joe Lewis is the world's champion fighter. Well, if he likes to think so, let him have his little dream. <laughs> Anyhow, the fight's in New York, and we can't go unless we find someone to take over our radio show this summer. Well, I know a very clever comedian who's available... A droll fellow who prostrates one and all with his witticisms and also has a most infectious laugh. You do? Who is he? <laughs> you? Oh, yes. I fractured them at the post office. Yesterday, I had them laying in the aisles. Several of them were run over by mail trucks. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid you'd never make a radio comedian, Mr. Postman. You're right. My voice is more the Ronald Coleman type. <laughs> yes, that's it. Well, thanks for bringing me this letter. You're welcome. Well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember? Keep smiling? Just what I had in mind. <laughs> Who was it, Gracie? Oh, the postman with a letter. Oh, look. It's from Radio Life magazine. Well, open it up. Dear George and Gracie, each year Radio Life magazine presents a group of awards for outstanding radio performances. This year, it is our pleasure to give your program the award for musical achievement. Well, I'll be done. At last. Though April showers may come your way. Oh, you really deserve the award, Sugar Throat. Well, I didn't know my voice was that good. Ah, Judge, you're too modest. Just name another singer who's one tenth as good as you are. Well, Frank Sinatra. Him? Sure. He's one tenth as good as I am. Sinatra? Oh, why, you make him look sick. At least you help. <laughs> I guess so. Think some more. Oh, Gracie. Oh, I... please, Judge. I'm mad about sweet things, and nothing in the world is sweeter than your voice. Well... So open up the jug of your throat and pour the molasses of melody all over me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Though April showers may come your way, <laughs> they bring flowers that bloom in May. Oh, you must. Radio Live couldn't possibly have picked anyone else. And we're not... I guess not. <laughs> Was that all they had to say in their letter? Now, there's one more paragraph. Let's see what it says. Oh, yeah. Your program features one of the truly great musical artists of radio. And though it's raining. <laughs> and therefore, we confer this award upon Meredith Wilson. And no regrets because Meredith Wilson... <laughs> Getting that he's a musician too. But why do they 
they'd give him the award instead of me. Oh, well, who cares? But, George, it's a wonderful break for us. If they think Meredith is that good, he can do the program this summer. And we can go to New York. You think he can handle it? Oh, sure. We'll have a wonderful time at the fight. Oh, just one thing. Don't let Joe Lewis or Billy Kahn hear you sing. It might stop the fight. Stop the fight? Well, yeah. If they heard you sing, they'd forget to hit each other. They'd want to concentrate on you. <laughs> yeah. Let's call Meredith and tell him the news. Yeah, let's. <laughs> Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. Tennessee. Now, there's a tune to hang some memories on, Meredith. Especially for some folks, Bill. Folks who remember a certain famous dining room in Nashville, for instance. Two stories high it was, with Grecian columns on marble bases. Hmm? And sculptured fruit and game on the ceiling. Yes, and maybe they remember, too, some of the famous people they saw in that dining room. Statesmen, authors, generals, actors, actresses, and presidents of the United States. And then nobody could forget the famous dishes of Antoine, the imported chef. Or the wonderful coffee, especially blended for people used to the very best. And you know, Meredith, that old hotel still stands in Nashville, the old Maxwell House, a lasting reminder of a well-loved part of our American scene. And I can't help thinking, too, how that famous coffee named after the Maxwell House has itself become a real part of the American scene. But through the years, more and more people have discovered its rich, mellow flavor until today, more people buy Maxwell House than any other coffee in America. Yes, it's Maxwell House wherever you go. And it's easy to understand, for Maxwell House is such a skillful blend of really superb Latin American coffees, each chosen for its own special contribution. Manizales for mellowness. Medellin's for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramanga's for full body. The result is a blend so deliciously satisfying that north, east, south, and west, people ask again and again for Maxwell House. Coffee they know is good. To the last drop. I call Meredith Wilson, George, and he's on his way over right now. You know, Gracie, even though Radio Life did pick him as the top musical director... I wonder if he can handle our summer show. Oh, of course he can. Now, let's finish packing. He can close this bag for me. Holy smoke, it's sham full. How am I going to close it? Use your brain. Sit on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh. There. Oh, you're wonderful, dear. Joe Lewis and Billy Kahn may have bigger arms and shoulders than you, but I'll bet you can close a suitcase better than either of them. <laughs> Thanks, kid. Whose stuff is in that grip? Yours or mine? Well, I divided it up. I didn't want to hog all the rules. Well, good, good. So I put in my shoes and my dresses and my coats and my undies and my purses and your toothbrush. 
<laughs> well, that's fine. I'll have clean teeth and no socks. Well, smile pretty and no one will look at your feet. Maybe I shouldn't leave at all. Maybe Meredith can handle our summer program. Oh, now stop worrying. Meredith is a tremendously talented, capable, hard-working, conscientious man. Oh, he's all that. And more. More? Yeah, he's also a pretty big jerk. <laughs> Why, George Burns, that's a fine way to talk about your dearest friend. Well, I... Apologize this minute. But You I... take that back, you, what you said about Meredith Wilson being a big jerk. Okay, I take it back. Well, that's better. The way you talk, you'd think he was one on purpose. <laughs> I'm pretty worried about her being the right man to take charge of a radio show. Oh, nonsense of you. Come in. Good day, all. Oh, hello, all. <laughs> congratulations on winning the Radio Life Music Award, Meredith. Well, thank you, Gracie. It's nice of you to congratulate me. But uh, what about the 28 members of my orchestra? Oh, that's right. Hmm. Yeah, they haven't congratulated me yet. <laughs> <laughs> they will, they will. Look, Meredith, do you think you can really put on a good show for us this summer? I have no qualms about it whatsoever, George. My whole life has been devoted to music since I was a lad in Mason City, Iowa. Really, Meredith? Through an advertisement, I learned that I could get a flute by selling 5,000 cakes of Lucy's Lavender Lilac Soap. Oh, and you sold that many? Yes, my relations bought the entire 5,000 cakes. And to this very day, you can smell a Wilson a mile away. <laughs> And close up, it's overpowering. Oh, Meredith, I envy you. I wish I came from a more musical family. My sister studied the cello for 16 years, but she never learned to play it. Why wasn't she able to master the instrument? Well, for the first 12 years, she thought she was supposed to blow into it. <laughs> that was Bessie. Yes, sir. I trust that she eventually learned the proper position in which to play the cello. Oh, yes, but then she ran into more trouble. She was so knock kneed she kept smashing it. <laughs> Too bad she wasn't bowling it like your other sister. Hazel? Hazel, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, to return to my musical background... Yes, let's return, yes. I became a member of the Mason City Farm and Fireside Philharmonic. And in less than a year, I was playing first flute and second bass. Second bass, too? Yes, the Philharmonic also had a baseball team. <laughs> okay, Meredith, that's enough musical background. Yes, Meredith, we're proud to place our summer program in your capable hands. Now, wait Why, a minute. Thank you, Gracie. I'm sure that my efforts shall be well received. In Mason City alone, 60,000 ears will be listening every Thursday. 60,000 ears? Well, that's 30,000 people. Yeah, assuming they run two to a customer in Mason City. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's just what it averages. Uh, Walter Bunker has only one ear, but Charlie Buck, fortunately, has three. Well, that is... <laughs> well, I'm going out now to engage talent for the summer show. Goodbye, all. Goodbye, all. Gracie, I've worked hard all season, telling great jokes, building up our program, and now you turn it over to that schnook. <laughs> Why, people will laugh at him. Well, it's just for the summer. When you come back, they'll stop laughing. <laughs> Go pack your bags. So that's why I called you over, Bill. Mm -hmm. Gracie has told Meredith he can do the summer show, and frankly, I'm wondering if it'll be a success. Well, it's bound to be, George. I'll be on it. <laughs> has Meredith hired you? Well, you don't think he'd try to put on a show without me, do you? He may be dumb, but he's not demented. <laughs> show couldn't go on without you. Are you kidding, George? Do you realize what would happen to Maxwell House Coffee if I weren't on? People would stop drinking it? Oh, no, they wouldn't stop drinking it. Maxwell House is too good. But it'd be a lot weaker. <laughs> Their coffee would be weaker if you weren't on. Well, naturally, millions of women crying and all those tears dropping, dropping into, into the coffee. coffee. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In other words, you don't think Meredith could find a man with as much sex appeal as you, huh? Oh, he could find one with almost as much, but it'd take a couple of months to train him. <laughs> train him? Yes, you see, Gable's never done any announcing. <laughs> yeah, well, we got to break him in. Yes, yes. Well, so don't worry about things this summer, George. They'll be fine. 
Now, how's this for the opening announcement of the Meredith Wilson show? It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring Bill Goodwin. <laughs> the Meredith Wilson show. Yeah. You left Meredith out completely, and he's your friend. Oh, I'm sorry, George. Well, how's this? It's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring Bill Goodwin, and featuring the music of Bill Goodwin's friend. <laughs> Yes. This show can make Meredith bigger than Singing Sam. <laughs> the name Goodwin still seems to creep in there. Well, it's a name that'll attract attention, George. A household word. Everyone knows the name Goodwin. It conjures up the picture of a tall, handsome man. Okay, I guess you're set. Come in. Hello, are you Mr. Burns? That's right. Well, my name is Ben Gage. Meredith Wilson sent me over. I'm going to be the announcer on the summer show. They moved the Woolworth building, didn't they? <laughs> You're going to be the announcer on the summer show. That's right, Shorty. <laughs> Shorty, why, you blonde beanpole. My name is Goodwin, Bill Goodwin. Oh, pleased to meet you. What do you do, Mr. Goodhue? <laughs> Goodwin. I'm with the Maxwell House coffee people. Oh, really? Do you grind the beans? <laughs> no, I don't grind the beans. Well, what do you do, Mr. Goodley? Good win, good win Surely you're not in the stock room That's pretty heavy work for a fellow your age <laughs> No, I'm not in the stock room I sell Maxwell House coffee Oh, you have a grocery store <laughs> Well, uh, where's it located, Mr. Goodspeed? Um, <laughs> George, would you please tell Stratosphere Head my name? <laughs> oh, sure, it's, it's a name everyone knows A household word Yes Glowcoat <laughs> oh, George Grillo? Bicidol? Yeah, Bill Bicidol How do, Bob? Glad to know you Pay no attention to George My name is Goodwin Bill Goodwin Well, I'm glad we got that straightened so up So am I Now, what did you say your connection was with Maxwell House Coffee? I drink it <laughs> Well, believe me, you're drinking the best, Mr. Goodsmith now, look, the wavy wig, I... I, I Maxwell I, House is appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow. Look, friend, I... Coffee I, at its full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. Look, buddy, I... What are you trying to say, Mr. Goodgosh? Goodgosh? Now, wait a minute, peroxide top. I want to... I know it's hard for you to express yourself, but even you, with no voice and no personality, should be able to say that Maxwell House is tops. Hmm. Why, more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. Hmm. Well, what do you think of that, Mr. Good Humor? <laughs> George. George, did you hear that? Good humor, good gosh, good speed, good smith. I'm getting out of here. So long, Newman. Newman, oh, no! No, man. That, I, yes. I thought his I thought his name was Goodwin. It, it used to be. Well, Ben, I'm glad you're going to work on the summer show with Meredith. Well, the pleasure's all mine, Mr. Burns. Uh, I'll call Gracie and uh, I'll tell her the news. Oh, Gracie. Yes, dear. Gracie, this is Ben Gage, the man Meredith picked to announce our summer show. Ben, this is my wife. How do you do? Oh, well. My, it's nice to meet someone your size in these days of shortages. <laughs> Uh, you and Ben get acquainted, Gracie. I'll go out to the garage and get the trunk. Ben Gage. You know, that name sounds familiar somehow. Was it in the newspapers recently? Well, yes. You see, Oh, I don't, was... don't tell me. Let me guess. Did you strike against somebody, or did somebody strike against you? <laughs> no, neither one. Well, and how did you get in the newspapers? Well, I got married. My wife is Esther Williams. Oh, oh, of course. The famous swimmer. You lucky man. Esther is so young and so beautiful and so glamorous and exotic. We're entirely different. You're entirely different? Yes. I can't swim a stroke. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, now let's get down to business, Mr. Gage. Um, <clears throat> does George feel that you're the man for our summer show? Well, yes, he seems to. Well, when a woman has a clever husband whose judgment she respects, she should take his opinion with no questions asked. In my case, I'll ask a few. 
All right. Now, first, I want to find out if you know enough about radio to handle the job. Now, I'm warning you, these questions will be pretty technical. I'm ready. Um, what do you do when you want to listen to a program on a radio set? Well, I turn it on. Mm -hmm. And when you're tired of listening? I turn it off. Uh-huh. Well, so much for the technical stuff. <laughs> <laughs> now, next. Uh, what talent do you have? Well, in addition to announcing, I do a little singing. Oh, oh, you sing. Yes. Well, that may change everything. You're good enough to take Bill's place, but... Are you good enough to take George's place? Well, does he sing? Does he sing? Why, he couldn't sound more like a bird if he had feathers on his tonsils. <laughs> well, gee, I, I didn't know. Oh, you'll never equal him, but you might get by. Uh, let's hear your voice. All right. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Mm -hmm. Very pretty. Uh, can you sing in English, too? <laughs> Oh, yes. Well, I'm very favorably impressed. Oh, on the whole, I think you'll do. The way pro shells may come your way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they bring flowers that bloom in May. Uh, <laughs> well, Mr. Gage, did you hear that? Yes, where'd it come from? Out and back. Not bad, huh? It's wonderful. In these days of no butter, you're very smart to keep a cow. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, gee, did, did I say something wrong? Well, you certainly did. That well, uh, was George singing. And if that's all you know about music, we don't want you on our program. Oh, honest, Mrs. Burns, I didn't mean to George, say... George! Well, George, come uh, in here. Uh, the idea of mistaking my husband for a cow. <laughs> they're, they're nothing alike. <laughs> Who, whoever saw a cow with bags under its eyes? <laughs> Did you call me, Gracie? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gage won't do it all, dear. You have to stay here and handle the summer program yourself. But, Gracie, I'm all set to go to New no, York. No, you stay here, George. Now, wait a minute. Who's the boss in this family? You are. You bet I am. Now, do I go to New York or do I stay here? You stay here. <laughs> but you said I was the boss. Well, you can have the title as long as I get my way. <laughs> Please, Gracie, I want to go. No, George, and that's final. Uh, let me try to persuade her, Mr. Byrne. What can you do? Yes, it's all your fault anyhow, you tone-deaf musicator. Well, I know it is, and I despise myself for offending such a charming and lovely girl. And that sort of talk won't do you a bit of good. Surely you won't refuse to give me another chance. One so young and fair couldn't be so cruel. Now you stop that. <laughs> But I'm, I'm sure the tenderness of your heart must match the beauty of your face. Give up, Ben. It's no use. <laughs> you keep out of this, George. <laughs> but he's not getting anywhere. Mm, that's what you think. <laughs> huh? Finish what you were saying, Ben. And, George, you finish packing. Well, Hallelujah. <laughs> George and Gracie really do begin their vacations next week, but they'll be back in September with all of us. Till then, Meredith Wilson will take over Maxwell House coffee time. You'll hear Meredith Wilson's music, the singing of Ben Gage and the King Sisters. It'll be a half hour later over most of these stations. To be sure, check your local newspaper. Oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's, only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just the jello, jello, six delicious, locked in flavors, can't be beaten. So the proof of Jell-O pudding's in the eating. The Jell-O twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just, Just the, the taste of Jell-O Jell pudding or of Jell-O and you know it's the one and only J-E-L-L-O.